Hello, welcome. This is a video about Gundam Requiem for the Vengeance, a six-episode CGI anime released on Netflix in October of 2024. As usual, this will be a spoiler-free review, although I'll talk about the premise and the basic uh, personality of characters and such, but no plot spoilers. Uh, the director of this actually got his start making Warhammer 40k fan films using Unreal Engine, and then founded a CGI animation studio in Germany. The director, writer, and music composer are all Westerners, but as far as I can tell, the rest of the major production cast are Japanese, so producers and other folks like that, with the animation done primarily at that German animation uh, studio. Let's talk about the basic premise. This is about the Xeon perspective on the ground during the One Year War in original Gundam. Now, if that's all word salad for you, don't worry. Uh, this is a basically an action war story in the primary Gundam timeline about pilots and ground soldiers in this big war uh, that in includes giant robots, as you can, you can see there. Um, so the thing is, it is basically, an, again, an action war story about ground units, we, where you have the protagonists and antagonists. That's basically it. If you're a Gundam fan, you'll definitely recognize some elements here, but it is not meant to have tons of references to existing characters or plot elements. It's really a self-contained story, so you don't have to know anything really going on about that. It's war, action. That said, they have updated the mechanical designs from the Gundam Universal Century timeline in a brilliant way, in my opinion. They really, they retain the basic silhouette and design of those machines, but feel a bit more like practical war machines. You could imagine these existing in real life better than you could the designs from early Gundam series, for example. Nothing against them, but they are 2D animation. Uh, and the way these are designed just, again, gets across more of that war story feel than you got from uh, the way they looked in earlier Gundam series. So excellent job there. Now, the crew used Unreal Engine 5 for the animation of this, which would have been relatively new for them. Uh, this only came out about two years ago. And uh, the, like I said, the show just came out uh, about a month ago relative to this recording. So it would have been a new technology they were working with. The style goes for relatively realistic characters, as you can see. And as a result, you will face the uncanny valley here. Uh, there are times when it just doesn't quite reach that level of realism you'd expect for this level of detail for a character. Um, sometimes the character and facial animations are stiff and characters will maintain the same facial expression throughout a shot with just the eyes and the mouth moving when there should be a little more you know, facial movement during that shot, stuff like that. That said, the original Mobile Suit Gundam series had plenty of rough animation and plenty of stiff animation. And the analogy, I think, is appropriate. Back then, uh, animation in anime was quite static and pretty stiff. There wasn't a lot of motion in anime back then. And that, that crew was very much trying to bring dynamism to the, to the medium, to this technology that they were kind of str struggling with. And I think you can see the same thing here in this series. There's um, doing the best they can with a, a, a new technology here. So. I will give them a pass on that in that sense where, okay, it's not perfect, but what is perfect? And uh, that's totally fine. And that said, there are some moments with highly emotive facial expressions where you're really drawn into the moment. And there's some effective character animation as well. So I'm not saying it's terrible throughout or anything by that uh, standard, or even that it's terrible in general, uh, just that there are some moments where it's stiff and a little off. It should also be said they're somewhat held back by their realistic kind of war story approach. 
nobody leaps 30 feet in the air or dodges a beam rifle in a tenth of a second here. You know, this is meant to be more grounded and realistic. And so there's little opportunity for mind-blowing feats of animation. Folks have to behave and move in a more realistic way. And that's just tough to pull off in animation. All right, let's talk about the direction and editing, which is fast paced, but never confusing in the action sequences. And here's a good example where we cut to this shot of a Zaku and it's not framed directly in the middle of the frame, right? We're looking at the barrel of the gun, not the entire Zaku. Much more like what you'd see in like war footage or in hastily grabbed footage on the scene of battle. Um, and so it uses these elements like in some shaky cam and some fast zoom techniques, but it uses it intelligently to heighten the intensity of a sequence instead of just throwing it in there to make it look different. Meanwhile, during quieter moments, the camera is allowed to linger, bringing us either into the character's emotional states or just the tranquility of the moment, giving the story some time to breathe. All right, let's talk about the characters. Since this is an action story, they're mostly pretty one-dimensional. They have a singular goal, typically to get somewhere or complete a mission, and nothing really gets in the way of that. So there's not a lot of complex um, inter-character drama here where a character is struggling with what they should or shouldn't do. It happens occasionally, but it's more what's the right uh, combat thing to do as opposed to a lot of complex moral quandaries. That said, each character has their own way of talking and is distinct from each other. You can just swap them all out for each other. And their personality does affect their actions in the story. A headstrong character does act headstrong throughout. So they, they are consistent. And meanwhile, the music is this big, sweeping orchestral soundtrack in the general sort of John Williams mold. So, you know, huge feelings throughout this that uh, works very well for the series. Nothing really stands out, I think, which is a good thing. Uh, nothing feels discordant. Uh, there were one or two moments where the... Uh, approach felt a little bit odd to me, but in general it was you know, just what you'd expect from the music for this top notch. Now let's talk about the voice acting. Now interestingly here, English is the original language. This was dubbed first in English and the facial animations were made to match the English dub. That said, the English voice acting sometimes feels disjointed like the voice actors in an empty warehouse and announcing their lines, not surrounded by other people in dialogue. Now the voice actors themselves do a fine job with their material. Each one is emotive and appropriate to their role. So no complaints about the voice act actors themselves, it's just the way they were directed at times feels a little disconnected. I do wonder if there were like a lot of edits to the material which required some Frankensteining of different scenes, maybe? Dunno, but either way, you can always switch to another dub if that concerns you. Fundamentally, this felt like Gundam to me, hitting many of its common themes. The brutality and horror of war, people just doing their best, and blithe, uncaring commanders. A bunch of other things as well. Now, there is some dissatisfaction out there about the ending, I don't share that dissatisfaction. I felt it was a perfectly appropriate ending for a Gundam series and for the themes they were trying to explore. Unfortunately, I can't talk about it with getting into spoilers, but I am planning a video to uh, talk about that. Either way, I'd recommend going into this with an open mind. Be aware the animation's a little stiff sometimes, the voice acting is a little off uh, occasionally, nothing's perfect, and um, I found it a very, enjoyable and occasionally a slightly thought-provoking ride, which is generally what I go into Gundam for. So hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.